Welcome to iLecture Online. To gain a better understanding, let's do one more example of how to find the acceleration vector, in this case the normal component as well as the tangential component, when the position vector is given as follows. And we're going to do it for the value when t is equal to zero. So first we need to find the velocity vector and the acceleration vector in terms of the x and y components. So the velocity vector the derivative of e to the t is e to the t, that would be in the i direction, and the derivative of this would be minus e to the minus t in the j direction. And then we find the acceleration vector, so that would be equal to e to the t in the i direction, and that would become plus e to the minus t in the j direction. And let's find the magnitude of the acceleration when t is equal to zero, so a when t is equal to zero, well, I guess I should put that in there, when t is equal to zero, like so, is equal to e to the zero, well, like, let's see here, that would be the square root of e to the zero squared plus e to the minus zero squared, and of course, e to the zero is equal to one, so it would be equal to the square root of 1 plus 1 or the square root of 2. So that's the magnitude of the acceleration vector. But now we need to find the tangential component. So here we have a sub t, and that's defined as the second derivative of s with respect to time. So well, let's see here. ds dt, that is considered the velocity vector. So what we could do is we can find the magnitude of the velocity vector and that would be equal to the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared, so that would be e to the 2t plus e to the minus 2t, because I'm summing up the two components squared. And if I now want to take, well, let's see, here, that could be written as the quantity e to the 2t plus e to the minus 2t quantity to the 1 half power. The reason I wrote it like that is because now we're going to have to find the second derivative of that. So let's do that. So d squared s dt squared is the second derivative of that, which is 1 half times e to the 2t plus e to the minus 2t multiply, oh no, to the minus 1 half power, now multiply times the derivative of what's inside, that would be uh, 2e to the 2t minus 2e to the minus 2t. And then I can simplify that. Let's see here, that is equal to, when I factor out a 2, that counts out with this 2, so in the numerator we end up with e to the 2t minus e to the minus 2t, all divided by the square root of e to the 2t plus e to the minus 2t. And that would be the second derivative of s with respect to time, which by definition is the a sub t component, the tangential component. Now, that's quite a mess, but since we're going to evaluate it for t is equal to zero, that will become quite simple. e of t when t is equal to zero, because we're trying to find the acceleration when t is equal to zero, so we plug in zeros everywhere. So we have e to the zero minus e to the zero divided by e to the zero plus e to the zero. Well, that becomes 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 0 over 2, which is 0. How about that? The tangential component is equal to 0 when t is equal to 0. So let's write that in there. So I have a as a function of time. Oh, no, not as a function of time, but as a function when time is equal to 0, is going to be equal to 0 in the tangential direction. Now we need to find the normal component. We're going to use that technique again, where we can say that a sub n is equal to the square root of a squared minus a sub t squared. And since that's equal to zero, you can then see that a sub n is equal to the square root of a squared, which is equal to a, which means that the magnitude of the normal component is simply equal to the magnitude of the acceleration vector, which, by the way, we found. It's right here. Hmm. So that means that this is equal to the square root of 2. We can plug that in here, so plus the square root of 2 in the normal position. And so now here we have the acceleration vector in terms of the tangential component and the normal component for t is equal to 0. And that's how it's done.